Well, hello, America. It is Friday, and welcome to the Glenn Beck Program and to the Blaze TV. It is uh, not going to come as a surprise to you that we are facing the most important election in history, and I know people say that every time. That's the most important, but this time it's true. <laughs> this time we mean it. This time I don't know how we survive. Um, I don't know, honestly, how to make these numbers work and the direction that we're headed. Um, but we have a very clear choice. We are going to fundamentally disconnect from our founders and what they believed in, or we are going to limp along and hopefully reconnect with some of those. I say hopefully because the two candidates, I know one is going to disconnect. A message was transmitted to Vladimir. And because of that, I know that he's got much more than he's telling us up his sleeve. And I don't think that's a good thing. Mitt Romney is on the other side. <sighs> Mitt Romney is, he was my third choice. Um, last election, he was the guy that I was pushing for. Um, but last election, I was only concentrating on um, uh, finances. And I think this is the guy, this is the mechanic that can fix our finances. He's the guy who can fix the engine of our economy. I believe that with everything in me. However, I'm not sure that he understands small government. Okay, he was my third pick. And um, if, if you think that's bad, believe me, I don't think I'm third on his list. Mitt has not been on my TV show in years. Uh, years ago, he was on CNN. Uh, I think he's been on my radio show once. His wife was also on my radio show once. Um, and I am not here to do his bidding. And believe me, he's very well aware of that. However, I will tell you this. This network is about the truth, having no agenda. I will tell you, I am not going to vote for Barack Obama. I am going to vote for this guy, even though he's not my favorite. But that's not what this show tonight is about. The network is not only about agenda, it's about the truth. Unless you're telling the truth, you do have an agenda. And you can tell a lie in many, many different ways. Just a bald-faced lie? You know, here's an example. I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Okay, yes, you did. Well, uh, define sex. All right, really? You can just lie to people's faces, or you can play little games, or you can have the lie of omission. For instance, Van Jones. Is he a, a green jobs guy? Does he believe in green energy? Yes, he does. Is he well-spoken? Yes. Is he qualified for that position that they gave him in the White House? Yes, 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 yes. Is he a communist? Yeah. Was he a 9-11 truther? Yeah. But they never told you those two things. So that's the lie with Van Jones, because they omitted part of the truth. And if you don't have all of the truth, it ends up being a lie. And that has to be done on all sides. And what the story is on Mitt Romney is amazing, amazing. We're being told that he's cold and callous and just an evil rich dude. And Barack Obama is his brother's keeper. Yet, literally, Obama doesn't help his brother who lives in a hut. And Mitt, on the other hand, talks about being good and decent, but doesn't just talk about it and doesn't just reach into his big wallet. He actually does it himself. Tonight, I don't want to talk to you about his policies. Uh, I think we know his policies, and that's for you to decide. But the one thing that television and, and then really no media has even covered are some of the sins of omission. The press has committed the sin of omission on Mitt Romney. I'm going to share my favorite story with you that I heard uh, during the last election that really got no coverage. Um, and we have some other stories from the people who actually lived it. But before we get into that, I, I, want to, um, I want to show you the creative attacks on Mitt Romney by the press. And we did it since they treat everything in life like a game show. We thought we would treat them like a game show as well. Last week, Mitt Romney had a chance to show his support for the brave men and women he's seeking to command. 
but he chose to criticize President Obama instead of even uttering the word Afghanistan. My opponent and his running mate are new to foreign policy. But from all that we've seen and heard, they want to take us back to an era of blustering and blundering that cost America so dearly. After all, you don't call Russia our number one enemy, not Al-Qaeda, Russia, unless you're still stuck in a Cold War mind warp. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first hundred days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. We're going to put you all back in chains. If Mitt was Santa Claus, he would fire the reindeer and outsource the elves. Mitt has so little economic patriotism that even his money needs a passport. It's summers on the beaches of the Cayman Islands and winters on the slopes of the Swiss Alps. Mitt Romney's the guy who said corporations are people. No, Governor Romney, corporations are not people. People have hearts, they have kids, they get jobs, they get sick, they cry, they dance. They live, they love, and they die. And that matters. When Governor Romney and his friends in Congress tell us we can somehow lower our deficits by spending trillions more on new tax breaks for the wealthy, well, what Bill Clinton call it? Uh, you do the arithmetic. You do the math. When you look at the one tax return he has released, it's obvious why. It's obvious why there's only been one. We learned that he pays a lower tax rate than middle class families. We learned he chose Swiss bank accounts and Kalen Island tax shelters over American institutions. And we can only imagine what new secrets would be revealed if he showed the American people a dozen years of tax returns, like his father did.